If you're intimidated by the whole gospel chops thing, if it's something that you've been wanting to learn, but it looks a little scary, stick around, man. Because I'm going to explain to you why it really ain't no thing. That stuff might have looked a little bit fancy smancy, but don't worry about it. I'm going to break it down for you and let you know what's going on there. By the way, the backing track, if you want it, it's available for download. That is a track off of my album called Solo Comps for Drummers. If you didn't already get it, get it because uh, you're, going to be, you're going to be needing a couple of those tracks this year while we're looking at soloing for the year. But uh, yeah, if you want the individual track, just click the link in the description box. It's like a buck something. It's pretty much available anywhere you can download music. So anyways, let's get to it, man. So there are a few drummers that have made the whole Gospel Chops thing a little famous. You know what I mean? Put the spotlight on it. You watch guys like Aaron Spears, Tony Royster, um, Thomas Pridgen, you know, Ronald Bruner Jr., like all those guys. I put a big spotlight on the, on the Gospel Chops thing. And there are a lot of drummers that are still interested in doing it. It's easy to watch these dudes and look at what they're doing and just be like, like, what is going on here? And I get it, right? It's just like it's explosions and fireworks. It's the same reason why we love Die Hard. But the foundation, like the ground floor of what's going on there is really pretty simple. So let me get my practice pad and show you what's happening here. All right, so a lot of those gospel chop fills and phrases and soloing and all that stuff that you hear, all of that stuff is based on what you call linear drumming. 
I don't know if you heard of that term before or not, but linear drumming, basically all it means is you're playing one note at a time in a straight line. That's really all it is. So that's the first thing. The second thing, for those of you that have been wondering, like how, when you hear all of this crazy kind of stuff happening and just, it just sounds like everybody's falling off the time, but they come out of it and just nail the one like every single time. There's a reason for that. So um, aside from the linear thing, that's pretty much where it starts, the next step up are, um, are the subdivisions. So basically it's just you know, the two main common subdivisions used in gospel chops, the 16th notes, 16th note triplets. And then 30 seconds, like depends on the, on the tempo, but it's basically just 16th, 30 seconds, and then triplets. Now all that craziness that's happening, all that stuff that sounds like they're falling off the time or whatever, all that is is just a creative distribution of accents, right? So starts with the linear drumming, and then it's the subdivisions, the 16s, 30 seconds, triplets, whatever. And then from there, it's just moving around the accents. So if I start, let's start a click here. Let's play with sixteenths for a second. If I just start playing sixteenths like this, one, two, three, four, uh, like that. Um, if I start playing even accents, um, say like this, uh, or I can go. So you're hearing the accents, but they're all even. They're all like nice and neatly packaged and evenly spaced and all that kind of stuff. But if I play the same thing and randomize the accents, it sounds like this. So I can go, uh, and if I just start going like that, You can already hear things starting to go a little, you know what I mean? Like it sounds like there's a little bit more going on there than there is, but I'm still playing 16th. I'm just throwing all my accents around. Now, the other important component to all of that stuff, the thing that kind of pulls it all together, is the sticking. So when I was playing just now, I was just going basic left, right, left, right, left, right. When you're going around the kit, doing this kind of thing, you're using all kinds of different types of sticking and you're really emphasizing and punching some of those accents. So if I play the same thing now, but I vary my sticking between basically just singles and doubles, it looks like this. So I'll start with just the basic left, right, left, right, like that. And then the accents, but if I use different sticking, that's it, right? You add orchestration to that and all of this is going to sound crazy. It's the same thing with triplets. The triplets especially are the ones that sound super crazy because the movement is already a little bit different. Like it's not straight, it's more like this. But on top of that, like when you add the accents, you start throwing them around, um, then that's really when it starts to sound crazy. So it's the same idea, right? So it starts with the foundation, starts with the linear drumming, then the triplet subdivision, and the accents, and then the sticking on top of that, and you get this. So you, you just start with the one and a two and a three and a four triplet. And 
And then the accents. And then the sticking. Right? So that is the secret behind, you know, when you hear these dudes come out of these massive, crazy looking fills and then nail the one every single time. It's because all they're doing one, two, three, four, is that. You're just playing a triplet, man. It ain't nothing but a triplet. Now the drummers that I mentioned off the top, like these are the ones that, uh, or at least some of the ones that have made this entire style of drumming kind of famous and attractive to, uh, to young drummers. But make no mistake, this is not new stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like guys like Vinny and Dave, Dennis Chambers, Billy Cobham, like these dudes have been doing it for a very long time. So the whole concept of linear drumming is surely nothing new. It's just been sort of applied in kind of a different way to this particular style of music. And then, you know, because of all the fireworks and stuff, a lot of young drummers are attracted to it. If that's what you want to learn how to do, you're never going to learn how to do it just by copying some. It's going to be really hard to decipher what's going on there. So, although I'm not trying to sell myself as any kind of expert on this whole gospel chops thing, in particular, the ingredients, the stuff that's in it, these are things that I've been practicing for over 20 years now. And the crux of it really just kind of boils down to a couple of exercises that I learned from an old Dave Weckl instructional um, DVD, well, VHS tape at the time. I don't know if you even remember what those are, but um, there was a video, a Dave Weckl video called The Next Step. And I got a couple of really valuable uh, practice tips, tons as a matter of fact, from that video. And there are two particular exercises that I used to do all of time and still do to this day because they're just a lot of fun. But these are exercises that really helped me to develop my facility around the drums. It helped me to settle and get really comfortable getting around the kit. And then it just turns out that these exercises that I've been doing are basically the foundation to the whole gospel chops thing. And all it really involves is just playing a continuous string of either triplets or sixteenths around the drums, just using different hand and foot combinations, left, right hand combinations, and hitting basically anything that you got on the drums at slower tempos at first, and then you gradually speed it up. So all I used to do on a regular basis is I would go downstairs, put on a, a relatively comfortable tempo, and then just practice, first with sixteenths, using singles and doubles, and including the feet, just practice getting around the drums.
Now the trick to, to, um, to being able to play the triplets that way, because there is a bit of technique involved in doing that, obviously, but a lot of it is mental as well, because the whole thing about playing the triplets, well, especially when you're bouncing all these accents around, the trick to doing it and the trick to nailing it every single time and keeping it on track is being able to hear that triplet subdivision while you're bouncing around all those accents, right? So you need to have this sort of running uh, uh, four, one, two, three, four. You need to have that sort of running through your head the entire time and you need to, con to, to be able to continue to hear that while you're throwing the accents around. And that takes a lot of practice. Because as soon as you start moving accents away from downbeats, then it really starts to sound a little bit wonky. And it's kind of like, it's like a magic trick, right? It's like sleight of hand, the art of distraction. Like all of these, all of these accents are shifting and it's like all of a sudden the one moves over here and it's like, oh, wait a minute, no, now it's over here and now it's over here. But at the end of the day, man, it's just uh, 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 with a bunch of shifting accents all over the place. So anyways, that's the deal, man. Like that's, that's really all there is behind it, at least at its foundation. And, um, and again, I'm not trying to diminish that type of music because there is a fair amount of technique involved in being, in being able to do that especially up-tempo and keeping it clean. But, um, but don't let it scare you, man. It's not out of reach. If you just do these exercises, the ones that I demonstrated earlier, where you're just sitting around the drums, just using singles and doubles, starting at slower tempos, um, and just practice getting a little bit creative with your accents, but keeping it all, keeping it all in context of the four, of the downbeat, then... Um, then you'll find that it's, it's almost exactly the same thing. And then from there, you can, you know, it's easy to bounce back and forth from sixteenths to triplets to, you know, whatever else you want to do. Because eventually all you hear is, all you hear is that, right? And then once that gets into your brain, then you can do whatever you want with it. So there it is, man. That's it in a nutshell. Like, don't, don't be intimidated by the gospel chops thing. I know it looks a little scary. But if it's something that you want to start working on, you can start working on it. You have a basic understanding now of what's underneath it. So, you know, it shouldn't be a big deal. Just go downstairs, turn on a click, and then start working on the drums. So there you go, man. Pro tip from Beat Down. Thanks for watching this video. Share it if you dig it. Go ahead and download that Play Along track and start having some fun with it. That's it. Hit that notification bell, man. So you know when the next video is coming out, like, subscribe. See you next video.